This is an M-rated game, so viewer discretion is advised. I mentioned in my Ninja Reflex review that I bought a few games at Blockbuster for a really cheap price, and this is another one of those games. Now I got this one for $6, and I have to say I got my money's worth, but is it worth the full price of $15 that you can buy it now? There are actually two full games on this disc, so it already seems like a great deal. Two for the price of one. But let's actually look at these titles. Now both titles' default setting is to use green blood, and seeing how I don't do M-rated games very often, I quickly turned it to red. So bring on the gore! The graphics for the second game were just awful. It looks like it hasn't been updated when they first released it, and that's a shame. It really made it unfun to play, as everything looked blocky and jaggedy, unlike House of the Dead 3, which while not anywhere near the Wii game's graphics capability should look like, at least it was prettier than its ugly brother. The controls for both games were really good. I really liked the way it accurately found where I was pointing the Wiimote, and that made it much more fun to play. The controls are as easy as point and shoot. To reload, you quickly move your Wiimote off screen. Now this game supports the Wii Zapper, but as most of you know, I don't. In in fact, I think my Wii Zapper is currently located in a place we call the Trash Dump. So I played this game using my Nerf gun accessory, and it worked great. You can play either title with two players at once, and I think when you do that, it made the game slightly easier, but only slightly, because even on the easiest setting, this game is really hard. The second title was the hardest of the two. Both of the games only give you a certain amount of hearts and continues, and after that, it's game over. You can tweak with how many hearts and continues you get, but not by much. You can unlock different amounts to tweak it with as you play the game normally, but it's nowhere near where it should be. This game was way too stingy on continues. Five? That's way too low for a rail shooter, especially one that throws so many bad guys at you. There was an option in one of the game modes to increase your continues by two, but still that's too low. I will say though, I did get better and better and eventually I got to level three on both games, but that's about as far as I could get. It seems wrong they limit you on continues. If this is really a port of an arcade game, do you really think that people would stop playing after five quarters? No, they keep going, but limiting us with so little continues takes a lot of fun out of the game for me. I really enjoyed House of the Dead overkill and mainly that was because I could get through the whole game because there was unlimited continues. I can enjoy the story and the action without having to worry about running out of continues. There were different guns and ammo to acquire. They would really help dispatching the bad guys quicker. The enemies come in different shapes and sizes, and it was almost always best to aim for their head, as it would take them down the quickest. There were boss fights at the end of the levels, and they would be very challenging to do. I loved the boss fights in the third game the most, as I think they were the most clever. Each title had branching off parts of the level, so you didn't always have to see the same areas over and over again. And I thought that was a really good idea, and it really added to the replay factor. When you lose all your continues, it shows you on the map where you traveled and how much further you were to the end. I thought that was a cool little extra, and it shows you how much progress you made while playing the game. There were different modes to play the game, like an arcade mode or a time mode, so you could change it up a little bit, but the levels didn't change, just the way you played them changed. House of the Dead 2 and 3 is an arcade shooter. Its simple gameplay will force you to keep at it, always hoping that you'll get farther every time. However, this is not an arcade, and both of these titles are not as much fun as the last House of the Dead game I played, and that was all due to the lack of unlimited continues. The game is currently $15, and if you're a fan of the series, you will enjoy this title, if not for the nostalgia factor alone. But I do have to warn newbies to the series, you will get frustrated easily with this one. And if you want to play a better House of the Dead game in my opinion, buy House of the Dead Overkill. But for the veterans of the series, you will enjoy it, and for you, I think it's worth a buy.